out loud. What's your biggest critique of society as a whole? The infantilizing of adults, I think, is probably my biggest my biggest critique. Um, and I think I think therapy has played a big role in this, where people have been trained by therapists to think that they have some special unique issue that needs uh, to be talked through and to get like medication. When like realistically, I think a lot of those issues end up being made up because what's the expression? When you're a hammer, everything becomes a nail, so to speak. You know what I mean? And if you're, if you're, um, you know, a psychiatrist, I'm sure there, there's a lot of shitty psychiatrists. I've been to a couple before. I've hated every single one I've ever had to go to. And um, I've never, I've honestly, I've never felt, uh, I've never felt helped before from a psychiatrist, not once. And I've been to quite a few. And um, I just, I just think it's a scam and it, and it creates this culture. It's created this culture specifically with like young adults where I feel like it's become this intermediate, you know, this in between between them and responsibility. And, you know, so if there's any like big life moments that happen or something, you know, they have to circle back to their psychiatrist and it's like they're it's made people very afraid to make mistakes, which I think is really, really bad because it's literally the only way people learn things ever is through up, right? So I think that's probably, at least in like Western society and what I've noticed. So I've seen the gamut of, you know, 18 year olds and 20 year olds uh, just entering the workforce. And I've seen um, how they act as humans and the lack of um, initiative, you know, like, like even the ones that are good employees, like, you know, they, they ask a lot of questions, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the way I was brought up and the way I wouldn't even see the way I was brought up, the way I brought myself up is probably more apt for my background, but <laughs> The way the way I had to teach myself because no one else was around to teach me anything was that um, I would always try to figure something out first by myself. And then when I hit a wall and I absolutely didn't know what to do, then that's when I would go to people. I don't think going to people for help is necessarily a bad thing. But I think when your first when your first instinct is to ask people for help, that's when I think it's a negative because because there there is like if asking someone for help, you you have to trust that the person helping you is good at teaching because if not, or, or maybe if they have enough time, because if not, then they just, they just end up doing it for you. And then you didn't learn anything. Right. So I think it's very important to always, I would rather, if I had an employee that thing up majorly, but they did it because they were trying to figure out a situation and they just zigged when they should have zagged like i'd prefer that over an employee that just comes to me you know 30 times a day to get me to fix their problem i'd much prefer that just having some level of autonomy in life i think that's something that's really really missing what i've noticed specifically from from society as a whole at least in the western world um what's your biggest critique okay i literally just read that one what's your mother's maiden name you he's 68 you i think jimmy will be first to stalk you <laughs> i don't know uh shout out shout out shout out to jimmy i have nothing against him i'm not smart enough to know things though so don't trust me also don't trust and i'm just putting this out there don't take anything i say uh truthfully i'm like i'm literally really dumb so if you hear me just i i i have a uh, i'm I'm very, uh, I'm very chat GPT like. I come off very confident when I speak and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm really, really dumb. So don't just everything I say, just do the opposite, and you'll, you'll be fine. Basically, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. There's also a myth that your brain isn't developed until you're 25, which gives young adults a reason to extend their adolescence and make excuses. Well, your brain isn't fully developed till you're 25, but someone that's in 20 isn't like a complete re though. Like they have. You know, I wouldn't treat someone that's 20 the same way I would treat someone that's 27. I'll tell you that much because there is like a, there is a huge difference. Like I, I can honestly say, um, knowing a lot of, you know, people from different age ranges that there's a vast difference between someone that's 
20, 25 and 20 and 20. There's like a huge difference, but um, I don't, I don't think someone that's 20 is someone that's 17. You know what I mean? I think there's, I think there's a big growing period uh, between like the ages of like 17 to 25 and some people go faster and some people grow slower. It's whatever, but you know, not, not every 22 year old can run a company, but some can, you know what I mean? Not every 22 year old can actually, I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I believe in that. Let me think about that for a second. So I was going to say not every 22 year old should get married, but I think going back to, um, going back to the infantilization of adults, I think not throwing yourself into the deep end and not putting yourself in situations where you feel like you're completely overwhelmed and you've bit off more than you can chew. I think that's, I, I think we've we've walked away from that as a society, and I think that's very important. That's something I do constantly. That's something I do quite often, not by choice. It's actually mostly by arrogance, honestly. Um, I'm just a pretty arrogant, uh, truthfully. I always think I'm the smartest person in the room, so I often uh, will just like walk into things, or you know, or take on a task at work, or do whatever. And um, oh, here's a here's a prime example that probably some of you can definitely uh, relate to, um, or at least know what I'm talking about specifically, is my interview with TJ. I was like, oh, okay, I've never really interviewed anyone before. Let me do it live, and at the same time, I've never done a movie review for, before. Let me do that live, and let me do both together. And uh, yes, in retrospect, the movie review was really bad. That would have worked so much better in like an edited format. But that was me biting off way more than I can chew because I was completely underprepared to do all those things simultaneously. Like even as I was, uh, you know, in the moment in like, as soon as I started doing the movie review part of it, I was like, oh, this is too much for me. And then I, and uh, like, I it was, I was focusing, I was trying to focus on too many things at once. And so it was like, it was just very overwhelming for me. So then that's why halfway through the movie review, I was like, I'm just, I think I'm just gonna, this is gonna make me look really dumb and stupid, but I need, I need to pull the cord on this because A, it's bad and B, it's like, it's just too much for me to do. And then I think, I mean, listen, if, if the interview was still bad, whatever, it's your guys' opinion. But I think the interview after that was pretty good. I bought, listen, in the whole, in that TJ interview, I bombed it. I'll tell you that much. Um, I really beat myself up over that one. But, um, you know, but I think it's important. That was like a super big learning moment for me. That was a moment where I put myself in a situation where uh, I really embarrassed myself. Then I think I did a pretty good job of like pulling it out into something that was watchable after that, which is biting off more than you can chew, being in a moment where, um, being in a moment where you're overwhelmed, but instead of just like freaking out like a fucking lunatic you just kind of take a deep breath think about what is this is shit, but what is my best option for moving forward and doing that and you know it wasn't perfect but i think i i think i i was proud of what i was able to accomplish out of that and it was also a big learning moment for me where i now realize oh yeah i'm not i'm not like a good i'm not a good live public speaker <laughs> why the but I do so many things at the same time that I've never done before simultaneously. So that was like a huge, huge learning moment for me. So that's what I mean by that. Just, um, I think robbing people, the, the, that's what I mean by the infantilization of adults is robbing people of moments like that, where you fail, you, you fail spe spectacularly. You, it's, it's Icarus flying too close to the sun and his, his wings of wax melting away. It's that basically. Yeah, I think you need that. I think you really, really need that. I think that's super important as like a, uh, an adult, like an actual adult, not these infantilized versions of what adults have become. P Jam says, bro, I feel what you said about asking for help too quickly. I'm an apprentice in a trade and I've learned so much more when having to figure things out myself uh, as opposed to asking the older guys. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and it's okay to fail, you know what I mean? It, the, the idea is um, as you, as you f up enough times, you know, you start to figure out where the threshold is of like, oh, if I go, if I'm f 
fucking up too much and I go past this threshold, there's a good chance I'm gonna mega f something up. So then when you get to that threshold, that's when you ask for help. And it's just, but you won't, you won't know where those lines are until you try it for yourself. And um, you know, the more you do it yourself, the further and further that threshold becomes greater and greater because you just, you start gaining more experience. Reputation tarnish, viewership tank, Barbie Jeep saved it. <laughs> Yo, Barbie Jeep was actually pretty sick though. For anyone that stuck around, we watched Barbie Jeep. I'll show you two seconds of it. Barbie Jeep is the f shit. I legit, it's my dream. It's not my, I mean, it's not actually that. It's not my dream, but uh, Barbie Jeep racing is one of my favorites. I actually, I, I'm seriously considering going to the next one and doing like interviews, and shit. like almost like a Brandon Buckingham type. Shit. But the whole idea is like you get like those um, plastic children Barbie Jeeps and you just go to an extremely dangerously steep hill in Texas where there's like four or 5,000 people just hanging out and uh, you basically just try and get it as far down as you can without dying. That's the sport. Here it comes. <laughs> and then so the clock's still running even though he crashed so he has to run and grab it and bring it across, across the line, and that's when your time ends. So it's just whoever has the best time. It's the f***ing coolest shit ever. Let me just mute that for a sec while I read. I'll let you guys watch that while I read. Read some of these comments. Uh, I don't know what you were embarrassed yourself in the interview.